the dead. He is alive. What better news to celebrate than to celebrate the resurrection. I know we aren't together physically, but we are together spiritually and we are connected by the power of the resurrected Jesus. And so I welcome you today on this Easter Sunday to Crowley First United Methodist Church. It is an honor to be your pastor. My name is Pastor Amy. And it's an honor to be together today to worship Jesus Christ, and to give thanks to God for this amazing Easter morning miracle. I invite you wherever you are to um, join us in worship. We'll sing, we'll pray, we'll have a kid's time and a, and a message together. And I want you to sign in. Let us know that you are with us. Um, you can leave a comment on the Facebook thread where you're watching. You can also email Pat at CrowleyUMC.com. But the important part is to let us know that you are here today. We love you all, and we're so glad we can be together. Would you pray with me? Oh, gracious and loving, living God, you are awesome. You are wonderful. You have defeated sin and death. You have risen. Lord, in the midst of our darkness, in the midst of our emptiness, in the midst of our imperfections and struggles, God, be made known to us today. Help us to be filled up by the power of what you have done for us. Help us to be resurrection people by the time this service is over. God, if we haven't quite felt it yet, Lord, I pray that you would move by your Holy Spirit in the hearts of all who are here and all who are worshiping you. So that at the end of this worship service, we can leave and proclaim, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come as we worship you. Would you join me as we sing, Christ the Lord is risen today. risen. God's steadfast love endures forever. Death never gets the final word. God's steadfast love endures forever. Rejoice in this day of salvation. God's, God's steadfast, steadfast love endures forever. forever. Alleluia. Alleluia. As we come together now, as we open our hearts and minds and prepare for prayer, we want to invite you right where you are to leave your prayer request in your um, Facebook thread. 
This is a pre-recording, and so once this Easter Sunday worship is done, I will be going live to offer a time of live prayer for the prayers that you have lifted up. And right now, wherever you are, drop your prayer request in the Facebook Live feed so we can pray for you after the service. with me now the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Alleluia, amen. Would you join me in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, earth and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son our Lord, Lord, who was, was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. At this time in the service, we would typically pass the offering plates, but we aren't in person to do that today. However, you can still give. You can still be faithful in your generosity and give today in response to the love of Jesus Christ for each of you that you have experienced at the empty tomb this morning. By your giving, you enable our church to continue to reach out and make disciples of Jesus Christ, especially during this time when we are separated and yet still able to unite together. So please consider being faithful in your giving. You can give by mailing a check to our church, but the quickest and easiest way is to go online and donate your tithes and offerings, you can go to crowleyumc.com slash donate. Again, that's crowleyumc.com slash donate, or you can also mail a check to the church. We appreciate all of your generosity, especially in a time when so many are struggling financially, and we pray that God would bless whatever gifts that you give and use them to multiply the love of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your faithful servants and for their generosity. We thank you for their selfless giving. We thank you for the resurrection of your son for each of us. As we prepare to give today in whatever way that might look like, Lord, we pray that you would take our humble offerings and make them yours. We love you. Amen. Good morning, happy Easter boys and girls. 
It's a great day to be alive and to celebrate that Jesus is alive. And it's a great day to give faithfully, as I just talked about with your parents. You can still give. You can't put your money in our little church, but you can go online and give. Um, We appreciate any of your generosity. So I have been reading all week something called The Story Egg. And The Story Egg is a book by Natalie Ard. And with it, we have opened up an egg each day that tells about the week of Jesus' life. We, st- we call it Holy Week today. We started with the, um, the palm branch to symbolize Jesus coming into Jerusalem. And we went all the way to this egg, this gray egg on Holy Saturday that represents Jesus in the tomb because he died on the cross for us because he loved us. And he was then buried in the tomb. And so today we're going to complete that story. Now, I'm going to read what we have to say, and then I'm going to share a little bit after that. So here we go. As the new day was dawning and the trees began to sway, an angel of the Lord appeared and rolled the stone away. Friends went to visit his tomb. They brought burial spices aplenty, But when they arrived at the cave, they discovered his grave was empty. His friends entered the tomb. They found burial cloths of linen. He had done just what he promised. Yes, Jesus Christ had risen. Jesus died for our sins. He paid the ultimate price. He has given us eternal life. That heavy rock could not hold him. Jesus needed to be free. He conquered sin and death to save us, to save both you and me. So let's see what's in the final egg. Here's the egg that represents the tomb. What's inside of it? Let's see what it is. There's nothing in it. It's empty. The egg is empty. Um, Shouldn't we have candy or something? How many of you opened an Easter egg this morning and you had candy? That is what we often think is a really exciting Easter surprise. But did you know that the fact that this egg and the tomb was empty, was actually the best present of all. Did you know? It really is. Let me tell you about it. Let's finish our story. Let this empty egg remind you of the tomb that was found bare. Although his body was gone, Jesus can be found everywhere. He's in the blooming flowers and the emerging butterflies. He is in each and every raindrop and the clouds up in the sky. Easter is Jesus raised from the dead. He is our hope and our joy and our life's daily bread. Jesus rose from the grave to him be glorified. For Jesus Christ has arisen. Yes, Jesus Christ is alive. Now you can see we have a verse down here from 1 Peter um, chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And that's what we're celebrating today. Yeah, candy eggs are good, right? And and Easter gifts are good. But the greatest gift of all is that the tomb was empty. Jesus was alive. He came back. He rose from the dead for you and me. And so we don't have to be afraid anymore of the future. That's the best news ever. So I want you to tell people that Jesus Christ is risen. There are people today all around the world. You may not be able to see them, but they are celebrating. And that's why we remember and celebrate every year that Jesus rose from the dead. 
We're going to show you in just a minute after we have prayer some other people who are celebrating that Jesus is risen. And then we want you to go and tell everyone, too, that Jesus Christ is alive. So would you pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much for sending us your son, Jesus. We thank you for what he taught us, that when he walked around on this earth, we thank you for how he loved us. And we thank you, God, that he loved us enough to die on the cross for you and for me. And God, we thank you most of all that he rose from the dead, that he is alive, that the tomb was empty. That is the greatest news that we could ever have. The news that Christ is risen. Help us, Lord, to tell our friends and neighbors that Jesus is alive and we thank you. We thank you that Jesus has risen. We love you, God. Amen. All right, kids. So in a right, one, two, three. Let's take a look at some people that you might know who are celebrating that Christ is risen. Will you join me in our prayer for illumination? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. It started almost immediately in the clergy groups that I follow. As soon as the COVID-19 pandemic began to show us that it was necessary to close worship services to the public and bring them online, many of the pastors that I know and, and pastors that I follow around the world started looking at the calendar they started looking at the calendar and they started counting and they began to be filled with anxiety. 
They were anxious. We were anxious because we were literally three weeks out from Holy Week, which meant we were four weeks out from Easter. And this timing was not ideal. This is the greatest, biggest celebration of the church year. And here we were in isolation. We were nervous, but we also felt reassured. Surely, surely all of us would be able to be back in person in the church by Resurrection Sunday, right? Like many others, I prayed and hoped, and soon it became very clear This period of isolation was not going away anytime soon. And so I and many other pastors began to re-look at our plans. We began to rethink them. We started to wonder and pray about how we could make Holy Week and Easter meaningful even when we were practicing social distancing. But... On the social media clergy groups that I followed of pastors around the world, some pastors were not so easily persuaded. Some were bound and determined. They were bound and determined to make an Easter Sunday worship experience happen no matter what. And when it finally became clear that this just wouldn't be possible, that it was even against the law to hold public worship. Some of these pastors began to post things like this on social media. If we can't have Easter morning worship together, then we're just going to postpone Easter completely until we can all be back together again. That first Sunday when we're all back together in the same building, that's what we're going to do Easter. We're not going to follow the calendar. We're just not going to celebrate until then. When I read comments like this, I understood the sentiment behind it, but it also really made me sad. You see, I promise when we come back into this building, whatever day that is, Lord willing, we're going to have a big Resurrection Day celebration. We're going to celebrate big that we are back together. But as a pastor, I am adamantly opposed to canceling Easter just because we can't be together. To do so would go completely against the entire reason that we are here and celebrating today. To say that we cannot have Easter if the church is empty means that we fail to understand the meaning of the empty tomb. Easter is not a place. It is a state of our hearts and a hope that we find in Jesus Christ rising from the dead. And if we cannot celebrate Easter because things aren't perfect, then what does it say about our faith? Easter is more than just one day on the calendar. It is a lifetime of living into the promise of the resurrection. It is the promise that death is not the end, that God is always going to have the last word. It's the assurance that the same God who conquered death through Jesus Christ holds the future. So why should we worry? Why should we be afraid? But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's slow it down and let's go to the tomb on the first resurrection day Years and years ago, early in the morning, let's hear the words from the gospel of the book of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early in the morning of the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, and she saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. She ran, she ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved and said, they have taken away the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple went running. They left to go to the tomb 
They were running together, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter, and he was the first to arrive at the tomb. Bending down to take a look, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he didn't go in. Following him, Simon Peter entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there. He also saw the face cloth that had been on Jesus's head. It wasn't with the other clothes, but was folded up in his own place. Then the other disciple, the one who arrived at the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They didn't yet understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying. But Mary... Mary stood outside near the tomb, crying. As she cried, she bent down to look into the tomb. She saw two angels, dressed in white, seated where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and one at the foot. The angels asked her, woman, why are you crying? She replied, They've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have put him. As soon as she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Thinking that he was a gardener, she replied, Sir, if you have carried him away, please tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and she said to him in Aramaic, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, don't hold on to me, for I haven't yet gone up to the Father. Go to my brothers and sisters and tell them I'm going up to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene left. She went running. She announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Then she told them what he had said to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and holy God, new every morning is your love, great God of light. As we come to you on this Easter morning, as we journey to the empty tomb, we pray that your Holy Spirit would fall afresh upon all of us who are gathered today. I ask that you would help me to step out of the way and be a willing vessel. May your Holy Spirit speak through me and speak specifically to each one of your children who are listening. May we encounter you, risen Lord, and may we be changed. Changed because of our encounter with you. Come, Holy Spirit, and have your way. For you are here and we, your children, are listening. Amen. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Early in the morning, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb she didn't go when everything was bright and cheery and hopeful. She didn't go in the light of the day. She didn't go when the blessings were abundantly obvious and the church was full of people. She did not go in a mood of joy and rejoicing. She did not go with a sense of holy anticipation. No, Mary went to the tomb while... W-H-I-L-E, while it was still dark. 
She went when the world felt like it had been turned upside down. She went when it felt like nothing would ever be the same again. She went when hope seemed lost and everything around her was dark. She went when the church was empty and the congregation had to worship online at home in isolation. She went alone with a heart that was broken, a heart that felt truly empty. Perhaps your own, your own heart feels a little empty today. As you watch this service remotely from your living room, perhaps you are grieving the loss of the everyday life you are used to, or grieving the Easter traditions that bring you comfort, or grieving the loss of a loved one who has died. Perhaps like Mary Magdalene, you don't understand how this could have happened. Think about her heartbreak on that Easter morning. Think about her grief. Mary loved Jesus. She had chosen to follow him. She and the other disciples had learned from him. They had followed his teachings closely. She may have even thought that Jesus was invincible. And then the unthinkable happened. Jesus had been beaten, publicly humiliated. He suffered on the cross. And then that invincible Jesus had actually died. As Mary walked to the tomb, I can almost hear her saying to herself, this wasn't supposed to happen. This isn't the way that it was supposed to be. Maybe you've said that to yourself in recent weeks. This was not supposed to happen. This isn't the way it was supposed to be. Every step to the tomb means another step closer to reality for Mary Magdalene that first Easter morning. Every step closer reminds her that Jesus is gone and Mary is heartbroken. And yet, and yet, early in the morning of the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. We come to the tomb today while it is still dark. We don't wait until things are bubbly and happy again and the whole world is healed and restored. We don't put off celebrating Easter until we can be together again. No, we celebrate Easter today, right here, right now, regardless of the empty churches and the state of our world. We celebrate a God who is faithful. And we celebrate today because scripture tells us that when Mary went to the tomb, she found that the stone had been taken away. The tomb was empty. But wait, empty? We know that Mary was confused by the empty tomb because she runs and finds Simon Peter and the other disciples and says, they have taken away the Lord from the tomb. We don't know where they've put him. And then Peter and the other disciple, they run to the tomb. They find it empty. They don't understand either. Their confusion mirrors our confusion because we don't understand the concept of empty. What do we do with empty churches, empty schools, empty calendars, empty chairs where loved ones used to sit? What do we do with the emptiness on our hearts? Let's consider the word empty for a moment. Officially, the definition of empty is containing nothing not filled or occupied, lacking meaning. What do we do with the concept of empty? I don't know about you, but if someone came up to me and said, here you go, it's a present for you, and I unwrapped it, and the present contained an empty box, I would not be very happy. 
Is anyone happy to find out that their bank account is empty? Oh, no. What about your gas tank being empty or our food pantry? We live in a world that is not comfortable with the idea of empty. We live in a world that tells us that we must have more in order to be fulfilled, in order to be complete. So what do we do? We fill up the emptiness in our lives. We put more stuff on the calendar. We buy more material things until we reach the point where we are busy 24 seven and we have everything. We have all the toilet paper that we have hoarded and all the face masks and all the gloves. Our refrigerators are fully stocked with frozen food. Surely we can survive this pandemic, right? And yet, as we look at our overloaded shopping carts of essentials to make it through this quarantine, we do feel lucky because it appears that we have it all. But as the days pass, when it comes right down to it, we are still afraid and our hearts are still empty. Does that sound familiar to you? Our hearts are still empty because until we encounter the risen Lord, there will always be a hole in our hearts. Only a personal relationship with Jesus Christ can fill the emptiness within. Mary Magdalene experienced that firsthand. When she returns to the tomb, she is weeping and filled with grief. She is so devastated that she doesn't notice that she's been speaking to angels and she almost misses the presence of Jesus himself. It's like her grief is a veil of tears keeping her from being able to fully see. But in a time when our world is grieving and living in fear, I believe that the Gospel of John's depiction of Easter morning gives us hope. Out of all four Gospels, John's Gospel is the only one that depicts grief. Four different times, John calls attention to the fact that Mary is weeping. She is crying. And yet, and yet, it is to this grieving woman that Jesus chooses to reveal himself to first. That says something about Jesus to us. And we know that Mary Magdalene was there because if you read all four gospel accounts of the first Easter morning, yes, you will find that some details vary. Some are different. Some include more than one woman going to the tomb. But the one constant in all four is this. Number one, it depicts Jesus rising from the dead. And number two, Mary Magdalene is there. She is present. She is recorded as being present in all four Gospels. She was the witness of the empty tomb and the resurrection. And in our reading today, as she returns to the tomb alone, her heart feels empty and she is crying and Jesus calls her name personally, Mary. Instantly, she looks up and through her tears, not through her bright and happy smile, but through her tears in the darkness, Mary recognizes her beloved teacher, Jesus. Rabuni, she cries. And just like that, Mary is never the same. She came to the tomb that day expecting death, and she has literally been brought back to life by seeing Jesus standing there in front of her, redeemed and made whole. The grave could not hold him. Death could not hold Jesus back. And in rising, in rising, he brings the promise of new life and forgiveness for our sins. Like Mary, we celebrate. We celebrate today and every day that even when the churches are empty, we believe in the hope of the resurrection. We believe that empty is not bad because through the empty tomb, Jesus lives. And it is because he lives that we can face tomorrow. And because he lives, 
that all fear is gone. Can you hear Jesus calling your name? Jesus wants to meet you right where you are today in your grief, in your fear, in your isolation, in your depression, in this COVID-19 pandemic. So will you let him in? And when you hear Jesus call your name, I promise you, your heart will become full. Even when everything is taken away, we as Christians still know that we have everything because we know firsthand that Jesus Christ is alive. The tomb was empty. And because Jesus lives, our hearts are full. Years ago, I read an account of an Irish pastor named Thomas G. Pettypiece about an Easter Sunday that he spent in prison. He was in prison for his beliefs, along with others who shared his faith. As I prayed about this unique Easter in which it felt like everything that we are used to has been taken from us, his account came back into my mind. And so I invite you to hear his words. Today is Resurrection Sunday, my first Easter in prison. Surely the regime can't continue to keep almost 10,000 political prisoners in the jail. In here, it is much easier to understand how the men of the Bible felt, stripping themselves of everything that was superfluous. Many of the prisoners have already heard that they have lost their homes, their furniture, everything that they owned. Our families are broken up. Many of our children are wandering the streets, their father in one prison, their mother in another. There is not a single cup, but a score of Christian prisoners experience the joy of celebrating communion without bread or wine. The communion of empty hands. The non-Christian said to us, we will help you. We will talk quietly so that you can meet. Two dents of a silence would have drawn the guard's attention as surely as the lone voice of a preacher. But we have no bread or water to use instead of wine, I told them. But we will act as though we had. This meal in which we take part, I said, reminds us of the prison, the torture, the death, and the final victory of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This bread is the body which he gave for humanity. The fact that we have none represents very well the lack of bread and the hunger of so many millions of human beings. The wine, which we don't have today, is his blood, and it represents our dream of a united humanity, of a just society without difference of race or class. I held out my empty hand to the first person on my right, and I placed it over his open hand, and I did the same to others. Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Afterwards, we all raised our hands to our mouth, receiving the body of Christ in silence. Then we shared the cup. Take, drink. This is the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed for you. Drink from it, all of you, and when you do, remember me. We gave thanks to God and we drank it with empty hands. And then we stood up and embraced each other. A little while later, a non-Christian prisoner said to me, you people have something special that I would like to have. The father of a dead girl came up to me and said, pastor, that was a real experience. I believe that today I discovered what faith is. Now I believe that I am on the road with Jesus. Wow. That story of the communion of empty hands reminds us that that is what it truly means to celebrate Easter, even when it is still dark. That's what it means to stay faithful 
And that is what made it so powerful to the non-Christians around them. Their observation of the Christians was that the Christians' hands were empty. They had nothing but Jesus. But because they had Jesus, for them it was more than enough. And that was like a flashlight in the dark. And after witnessing it, the non-Christians wanted to know more about how it was possible to have such peace. There are people in the world right now that are wondering the same thing. How can you, as a Christian, celebrate today when we are in isolation, when we have nothing, when our world is in this pandemic? And that is why, like Mary Magdalene, it is our job to tell them, to tell them with our words and to show them through our actions. Because we have Jesus, we have more than enough. The tomb is empty, but our hearts are full and that is why we celebrate. And Christ can only become fully alive in our hearts when we empty ourselves of everything except Jesus Christ. He must increase, you and I, must decrease. When we truly do that, God comes alive and the possibilities are endless. And God, not death, has the final word. That's why once the confusion wears off like Mary Magdalene, we discover that the empty tomb is actually the greatest gift that we could ever hope to find. Because it means that the world has been opened to God. Even though there is nothing in the tomb, we have everything despite the emptiness because Jesus has overcome death so we can live. And to truly live, we must die to our fears and live as Easter people who have seen the risen Christ. Even if, even if we lose everything, even if we face trouble, even if we sin and fall short, even if we experience death, even if we are in social isolation for what feels like forever, even if, even if we must trust and we must live as people with empty hands that are raised to Jesus, reaching out to God, hands that are open to God and empty to receive new life. That's the secret, that's the secret right there as how we live as an Easter person with Easter faith, even if. Our hands may look empty. Stretch out your hands with me. But when we release the past and we let go and truly trust, then we are actually filled. The emptiness is filled by Jesus Christ. It is filled with new life. It is filled with assurance. The assurance that is found in the Bible, 365 times, one for every day of the year, we don't have to be afraid. Mary Magdalene came to the tomb expecting death and instead she received life. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. No matter what, we can face tomorrow with empty hands that are open to God, that are open to hope and the joy of the resurrection of new life that fills our hearts. The tomb was empty, but because of it, our lives are full. Christ is risen. We have seen the Lord. Thanks be to God. Who do you need to share that good news with today? I encourage you not to wait. Share it however you can share it in your voice, but tell them that he is risen. Glory to God. Amen. Would you join me in Because He Lives?
for worshiping with us today. Isn't it good to celebrate the resurrected Jesus and the empty tomb? I'm so happy that you are with us, and I want to take a moment to um, just thank you for worshiping with us online and also to let you invite you to remember to join me right after this for a special Easter morning prayer time on Facebook Live and Communion. So as we prepare our hearts for our prayer time and our communion, I invite you to join with me in the benediction. He is risen! He is risen indeed! Okay, guys, that is not very enthusiastic. This is the best news in the world. Let's do it again. On the count of three, I want to hear you all the way on the other side of the world where you're watching. One, two, three. He is risen! He is risen risen indeed. indeed! Alleluia! Amen! Happy Easter! God bless you!